Good morning. It sounds like I can hear. <laughs> so, my name is Doug Kleinsmith, and today's talk is on the Buddhist long life deities. I had asked Lama Jinpa about what the subject of my next talk would be, and he said it should be on the long life deities, which include White Tara, Amitayas, and Namgilma. The sources of information for my talk are from Darshans with Lama Jenpa and various websites. By the way, I haven't memorized this, so I'll be reading. <laughs> the concept of long life practices seemed baffling to me. I originally thought that we said long life prayers to Lama La because we want him to be around for a long time so he can help us. I also understand that we do prayers for ourselves so we can be around for our children and other dependents. But to just want to simply keep living seems like the egotistical, materialistic view of wanting to be immortal in this body. Since if you do not believe in reincarnation or other afterlife beliefs, when you die, that's it. In several darshans and with Lama La, he said that the long life practices have several benefits. For just our basic biological health, we want to live as long as possible to train in dharma, to benefit others, and to prepare for our next life. Lama also said that for him, this also means that he is willing to come back to Sacramento in another body. <laughs> so I guess we should too. <laughs> and so the long life practices are also an extension of bodhisattva training and bodhicitta aspirations. Long life also implies a sense of infinite life. There is this continual life stream which does not begin or end. Particularly in Tantra, we learn that our mind stream is eternal and unending. The death of the body does not change that. We are going through many changes from birth, but all of the various spiritual practices are designed so we, connect, we can connect with the real unconditioned world, our unending life. On the practice level, we have to train and deepen our training in all of the yogas to feel that time is not outside of us. With practice like Kala Chakra, we want to synchronize with time. It feels that things are flowing better. Time is not chopped up into pieces, but it is flowing, and there are various natural time cycles, uh, hourly, daily, yearly, and so on. Medicine Buddha practice and long life deity practices go hand in hand. Medicine Buddha practice is a little bit like curing yourself after an illness or injury, like taking medicine when you're sick. The long life deity practices, on the other hand, are like preventative care. You get help on how to stay healthy, reduce obstacles, and so on. When you do the long life practices or sadhanas and recite the mantras to these deities, you purify unwholesome karmas that you've created in the past that makes your life shorter and unpleasant. So the long life practices are important because we need health, and without this human body in this lifetime, it would be very hard to trap practice. So even though we have aches and pains and we have to work a lot to preserve the body, it's still a wonderful vehicle for realization. Sometimes the Buddha would talk about people not being overly attached to their bodies in the wrong way, like spending a lot of money on expensive clothes or beauty treatments or searching for the fountain of youth. However, everything, including caring for the body, is in the middle way. The Buddha generally wanted to emphasize that you need to take care of the body, but it is impermanent, just like our modern automobiles. Both our bodies and cars need long-life protection. Of course, unlike cars, there have not been any new human body models for a real long time. <laughs> long life practices are also very important as we age to maintain our sense of purpose and our positive mood. We have to remind ourselves again that we're in this for the long haul. Understanding karma and reincarnation, we never have the feeling that we can't do something else in our next life. We can say, I didn't accomplish this, but I'm thinking ahead for the next seven lifetimes. We want health and good resources and dharma for our next seven lifetimes. 
So the long life and wealth and health practices are really important. Now on to the specific long life deity practices. The first one is White Tara, which is shown on slide one. Which is a little more specific than that. There. Okay. <laughs> So White Tara is one of the many manifestations of Tara. The most well-known are Green Tara and White Tara. In comparison to Green Tara, who is seated with one leg on the ground, ready to come to our defense, White Tara is seated in the more meditative diamond lotus position, with both legs folded under her. White Tara has seven eyes, her normal two eyes, an eye in the middle of her forehead, and one on each hand and each foot symbolize her compassionate vigilance to see all the suffering of the world. Though all the manifestations of Tara share the characteristic of compassion through their connection to Chimzing, the Bodhisattva of compassion, it is White Tara who is most closely linked to his essential compassionate nature. Her white color is a symbol of purity, the immaculate truth of the Dharma, and perfectly pure wisdom. When we say white, we don't mean necessarily like a white wall, but like clear, bright light. She is really just transparent like space. She is associated with long life, the healing of physical and mental illnesses, and the elimination of difficulties that appear on the road to the ultimate goal of realization. Her power is related to the prevention of accidents, natural disasters, lack of physical vitality, and anything that could endanger life. White Tara can be thought of as this continual state of well-being. Lama said that his root teachers were very much into White Tara practice, and they did a lot of White Tara practice for him, which is maybe why the reason is his health has been relatively good. White Tara's mantra is, as shown on the screen, Om Tare Tutare Ture Mama Ayupunya Yana Pushtim Kuru Soha. I do not know of any longer White Tara mantras. Now, for a little practice, we'll repeat the White Tara mantra 21 times, out loud for a few times and then silently. And I probably should have my mala. Or I can, I can use my fingers. <laughs> The original mala. Om tari tu tari tere mama ayu punya yana pushtim kuru soha. Om tari tu tari tere mama ayu punya yana pushtim kuru soha. Om Tari to Tari today, Mama Ayupunya Yana Pushtim Kuru Soha. The next deity is Namgelma, as was figure two on the screen. Kangshir Rinpoche, during his empowerment, which he conducted here, said her name means victory to overcome obstacles. Namgelma practice is done to increase merit longevity and wisdom, and particularly to include to clear the hindrances of untimely death. She is very powerful for granting long life to the recovery of physical problems and avoiding premature death through disasters and accidents. Namgelma is seen as a female bodhisattva with three heads and eight arms. Her middle face, body, and eight arms are white in color, signifying the illuminations of all misfortunes. Each of her faces has a different color. Her middle face, as I just said, 
being white, represents the eradication of disasters. Her yellow face on the left side represents the longevity and final longevity of life. And finally, her blue face, which is slightly wrathful, represents the defeat of evil. She is shown sitting in full Vajra posture, holding a double dorje and rope on her hands, while her lower left palm, lower right palm is in Varada Mudra, a gesture of granting wishes or mercy. Her first hand is tilted up, and her second left hand is grasping a bow, while her second right hand has an arrow. Her lower left hand is shown holding a kalasha, or a holy pot of nectar, with a blooming flower. The yellow head is looking at Amitabha Buddha, sitting on her right palm, which represents that her realization is equal or maybe even more powerful to that of Amitabha Buddha. There is a short mantra for Namgelma and a long mantra. The short mantra is Om Bhum Soha, Om Amrita Ayur Dade Soha. We will now repeat the Namgelma mantra 21 times, a few times out loud, and the rest silently. Om Bhum Soha, Om Amrita Ayur Dade Soha, Om Bhum Soha, Om Amrita Ayur Dade Soha. Om Ru Soha, Om Amrita Ayur Dade Soha. And the last long life DOD I will discuss is Amitayas, which is shown also as figure two, but it's really figure three. Amitayas is the Buddha of long life, merit, and wisdom. The name Amitayas is a compound of Amita, which means infinite, and Ayus, life, and so means he whose life is boundless. He is in the uh, subtle body aspect of Amita Buddha, the Sambhogakaya, the Buddha of limitless life, light, and life. Amitayas is depicted as holding a vase of Amrita, the precious nectar of immortality, which covers longevity. and the leaves of the Ashoka tree, which symbolizes long life without misery of disease. His body is said to be akin to a ruby mountain, radiant like a brilliant, pure jewel, eliminating ignorance and suffering of beings. His red color signifies invigorating and energizing. We need enough energy for our practices to reach the highest level as well as being the most effective in our day-to-day -day activities. Sincere practice and devotion to Amitayas is said to help eliminate all obstacles to long life, such as sickness and pain, and pacify the possibility of untimely or premature death. The Amitayas practice is important because longevity is an essential contributing condition that allows us more time and opportunity to practice dharma to liberate ourselves from cyclic existence, as is true for the other long life deity practices. We can also engage in this practice to remove obstacles and endanger the lives of others. The references that I looked at also said that Amitya's practice has to do with gathering your energy back, which you have lost. Several things can cause us to, to, in effect, lose our energy. First of all, having regrets, regrets about what we did. Regrets can be really toxic and can keep us really sad. This results in losing some of our life. Sometimes it feels we've given away our energy or someone has stolen it. When we feel sick or we feel down, sometimes we feel like someone's stolen my energy or we've given it away with our relationships to others. 
And third, sometimes you give it away through worrying or stress. If we worry about people, we may think, for some reason, that they have stolen our energy. He is an embodiment of the life-bestowing force. Lama Jentva said that Amitaya's practice is not just for long life, but to increase our life force. It is saying yes to life unconditionally. Usually we say yes, but, yes, but. Mahamudra and Dochen practices are also saying yes, totally, with no conditions. It is the unlimited life force. This is what I see in nature. Trees just keep growing and growing up. Animals keep going and going and do not give up even when they're injured. After a volcanic eruption covers the ground with lava or ash or just burns a forest, life just comes back sooner or later. I once heard a quote from a poet which says, you can cut all the flowers, but you cannot keep spring from coming. There is a short Amitayas mantra and several versions of the long mantra. The short mantra shown on the screen is Om Amarani Jiwantye Soha. As before, we will now repeat the short mantra 21 times, a few times out loud. Om Amarani Jiwantye Soha. Om Amarani Jiwantye Soha. Om Amarani Jiwantye Soha. Om Amarani. Om Amarani Jiwantye Soha. So, in summary, the three deities have similar protective qualities. Ramala said that historically each of these deities may have had strong followings in different parts of India. When the Tibetans inherited the Dharma, they tried to organize all of the teachings, including these long life deities, without any preference for one or the other. Everyone may have their own preference. You can find many chanted versions of the mantras for these three deities on YouTube, like everything else. If you want to practice any of the sadhanas for these deities and you have not received an empowerment, see Lama Jampa and ask him. So that concludes the talk. If there's any questions or comments, now is the time. Thank you, Doug. If I could make a request, could you give like a, a short summary of the three deities we just talked about? Maybe a keyword for each one. Okay. Uh, well, they're all for obviously long life to uh, reduce obstacles and to, uh, to make things move uh, slower. Uh, if you do the practice, you may feel something from them that uh, is like practicing other mantras as well. Uh, I know you can, the idea is to reduce anything that might impede our attitude and our health and our energy so we can do our practice more effectively, be uh, better in our relationships with other people and uh, ensure a better or a good rebirth in the next life. And uh, I think that's about it. And as I said, I use different phrases to describe each one, but they're all very similar depending on what preference you have. Hi, Doug. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> For us, Buddhist newbies, uh, getting some background in the deities is really helpful. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm learning, I tend to want to put things in my own words so that I can retain it. Um, and to answer his question, and, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, white Tara sounds like vitality. Mm. Would you say that's the case? Or? Uh, yeah, she seems more 
peaceful as well, because you see her seated in that position. I always feel the other is a little more dynamic. I mean, uh, let's, uh, uh, Matthias is just seated, but his red color implies vitality. And now um, Gelma with, with, with the three faces and all the implements that she has just seems quite active. <laughs> But that's just my feeling. Okay. And I'm no expert at all. So the second one, I, I'm not going to be able to say these these names. Yeah. Can you say it again? Uh, the second one was Na Nam Gilma. Nam Gilma. Yes. Her uh, Sanskrit name is even harder. Ushnish Oh, yeah. I'll still be Nam Gilma. <laughs> <laughs> so the impression I get from her is inner strength. Yeah. It seems like that, too. I mean, she... Uh, because she's awful, slightly wrathful too, in one of her faces, and so that shows. You Sometimes know. you need that. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one, say it for me again. Oh, the last one was Amatias. Amatias. Yeah. Uh, that made me think of perseverance. Mm hmm And uh, when Lama also stressed about the uh, life force, that was something that I don't necessarily think of that for the other ones, but actually it must be because any practices should increase that if they have any effect. Okay. But, but and they also talked about Amatthias with uh, getting back your, uh, what you gave away. And, you know, I, it's hard to imagine that, but I guess it can happen. Uh, even the, uh, there's a short sadhana for Amatthias in which essentially you, you gather back what you gave out. Almost like you're recharged. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're getting okay. more than just you gave out, too. <laughs> okay, what white Tara. So we just need a a single word or phrase for white to describe white Tara. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can't come up with it, huh? There isn't one. Okay. Right. That's too much of a summary. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I can give you uh, one word. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Thank you. I I just uh, I just didn't want that talk to end. <laughs> I I was learning sitting here and the way you were talking. Um, I I just felt like oh I didn't know that. And I really appreciate your talk very much. Yeah, a lot of this I didn't know. And you don't get that necessarily when you get empowerments either, because this is pretty detailed. And I had pages and pages of other stuff, which I didn't bring me. <laughs> and Lamela was very helpful, too. I guess um, I just wanted to ask Eli online if there's any question for you, because I can't tell. Is there any question or comment online, Eli? Friends, uh, online, if you have a comment or question, just drop it in the chat and Eli will share it on your behalf. You do need the microphone, Jay. It, it's because so the people online can hear you. Thank you, Doug. Um, I really enjoyed your talk today. Are there any recommend recommendations of where we can find more information on these deities besides YouTube? <laughs> Not really. Uh, if you could ask, uh, oh, the library. Yeah, we, we may have things in the library. I'm not sure. And you could also, if you get a chance to have an appointment with Lama Jumpa, you could ask him. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. I just wanted to add because uh, next Sunday we're going to have a birthday for Lama Jimpa, and I believe we'll do the Amitai Sadna with Lama Jimpa. Mm. So that'd mm. be really special if you all came and could actually participate that way. Wow. Yeah.
All righty, Doug. So we have um, a couple online here, some um, compliments and whatnot. So let's see here. I'm going to go bottom up. Mateo says, really great and interesting talk, Doug. Thank you for sharing, exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> we got Ellen Wolf. Great talk. Thank you, Doug. Please do another talk again soon. <laughs> Susan Farrar with uh, just thanks to Doug for a really informative talk. And then we have Elizabeth Wadsworth. And this one's um, maybe you can be elaborated on more is I was going to say, I always associate white Tara with healing. Healing? Yeah, I think they all are. Although usually healing is medicine Buddha. This is more preventative. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for being here. This is a nice crowd. <laughs> so, um, what your dedication? Due to the American these virtuous actions, actions may quickly attain the state of the Guru Buddha, Buddha and lead all the beings without exception into the enlightened state. state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that is not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chen Wei tens and gout, so please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. And may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness. And may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losang Drakpa, I make requests at your holy feet. So um, we have a few announcements. I think I'm going to uh, request Jen to talk about um, Sunday. Jen, can you talk about Sunday, Mama's birthday, a little bit? Just a, a little, well, I know we're going to send an email, but. Right, today is his birthday, but we'll, we're celebrating next Sunday. Um, and so it's, it's going to be the usual programming followed by um, some really great stuff. We'll have, um, we'll meet in here. Geshe is coming, Mamala will talk, Clamon's going to sing. Um, there will be um, also a presentation of mantra accumulations, the Guru Mantra, and um, and then we'll uh, go into the dojo and have a birthday party <laughs> proper, and there will be lots of fun things. Um, there will be some folks are uh, going to be dancing and more singing and poetry recitation, or not recitation, but just reading a poem and we'll have lunch together and with any luck we'll have some birthday cake yay thank you Doug. <laughs> if you're getting it from where i think you are i love you so much um and uh am i leaving anything out no so yeah please come please bring a dish and um, Patty and I will be reaching out this week to um, ask if you can help in some specific ways and um, some opportunities also that will to be revealed. Yeah, yeah, like cut the line. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's important too um, uh, because we are trying to rate. You know, we want to be able to pay for Lamala's retreat, the fall retreat. And I'm going to turn it back to Patty. Thank you again, Doug, for everything, really. <laughs>
Oh, oh. Uh, um, I got to bring it over to Andrew. So. So I'm, I've been away for a bit, but I'm back. And uh, that means I'm not sure if it was happening while I was gone, but Dharma men's group after temple. So um, if you want to come and catch up and it's kind of like the meeting after the meeting, we can, we can talk about uh, Doug's talk and what it meant to us if we want to or whatever. So um, there's going to be snacks. So I hope I see you there. Dharma men's group. Snacks. Omo araya pasaya na aindi. Om araya pasaya na aindi.